Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to go over the set and reset instruction for the Allen Bradley Micro 820 PLC using Rockwell Automation's Connected Components Workbench software. Now, if you're coming from RS Logics 500 or Studio 5000, then you probably know these instructions better as the latch and unlatch instruction. Also, as my kids have already written there, please uh, like our videos, subscribe, ask any questions down in the comments, and do all the social thingies. They're down in the description. Oh, turn on notifications. Turn on notifications. Okay, I forgot, forgot. Turn on notifications. The little bell thing, hit it. And we've already gone over the direct contact, reverse contact, and direct call instruction. We've done several exercises with those. And I waited intentionally to go over these two instructions because while I don't think there should be a lot of rules and structures for how you make programs, one thing I find is that beginner programmers use the set and reset instruction way too much when they're trying to sequence things. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind as you start doing your exercises where you need to do automated processes. You don't want to use 20 sets and 20 resets to do that. We're going to have a whole section on sequencing machine steps and we'll go through various ways. And one thing you will not see in there is the set and reset instruction. Let's go ahead and create a new program and we'll just call this set and reset. And then let's select controllers, micro 820, and we have a 2080 LC20 20 Q WB revision 12 select add to project and then let's go down to our ethernet configuration and let's set our IP address at 192.168.110 with a subnet at 255.255.255.0. Now right click programs and let's add a ladder program and let's go ahead and open that up. And we're going to add two rungs to this. So our first rung, we're going to use the direct contact, examine if closed. And we're going to go to the I.O. tab. And we're going to look at input four. Input four is wired to our green button. So let's label it as the green button. And then we're going to use the red button, which is input six. So let's go ahead and label it as the red button button and then also for our motor load that we're latching and unlatching we're going to use the green light which is output zero so green light all right let's select input four all right now we've been using this direct call output energize right the far right one is going to be the set call output latch so bring it down and then let's go to our IO tab and select our green light. I'll put zero. Now let's add a second rung and let's use the direct contact examine if closed again. And this time on our IO tab, let's select that red button. One thing to remember is that our red button is wired normally open in this exercise because we're still using our wiring enough to get started exercise. And this time, let's bring down the reset call output unlatch. So bring it down, and we're going to use that same green light. And that is our program. So let's go ahead and download that. And then if you need help downloading, then look in the description. I'll put a link to this entire playlist that goes through how to install the Connected Components Workbench software, how to connect to your PLC, upload, download, all those things. And now we're back in run mode. And if we press our green button, our green light comes on. And it stays on when I let off the button. If we press our red button, the green light goes out and it stays out once I let off the button. And that's the basic of the latch unlatch. But let's look at it just a little closer. That way we can understand how it works as far as a PLC scan. So how does the set reset instruction work compared to the direct call instruction? A set and reset instruction is actually the direct call instruction sawed in half. So let's talk about this thing. If you have a direct call, then if it is true, it's going to go and write a one. If it is false, it's going to go write a zero. This set instruction right here is going to go write a one when it's true. When it's false, it is going to do nothing. So this is one of those exceptions where this false instruction does nothing. And this reset instruction right here is going to go write a zero when it's true. When it's false, it's going to do nothing. 
So let's just walk through this program. Right now, this direct contact is saying, go look for a one. Where and input four, do I have one? No, so it's gonna be false. It's gonna pass false conditions over to the set instruction and a false set instruction is gonna do nothing. Then it's gonna to go to the next rung. This is gonna say, go look for a one. Where at input six, do I have one? No, so it's gonna be false and it's gonna pass false conditions over to our reset instruction and a false reset is going to do nothing. So now let's press the green button and I'm gonna press and hold it. And then our direct contact instruction is gonna say, go look for a one. Where and input four, do I have one? Yes, I do, which is represented by our checkbox. So it's gonna be true. It's gonna pass true conditions on to our set instruction and a true set instruction goes and writes a one. Where to output zero. And that is gonna turn on our green light. Now, when we let off of it, Let's go through it again, just so we can make sure we understand. So this direct contact instruction is gonna go look for a one. Where at input four, do I have one? No, so it's gonna be false. It's gonna pass false conditions over and a false set instruction does nothing. Then it's gonna to go to this direct contact, say go look for a one. Where at input six, do I have a one? No, so it's gonna be false. It's gonna go over with false conditions and a false reset instruction does nothing. So since there is nothing to actually turn off this green light, it's gonna stay on. This is another concept I think new programmers struggle with a little bit. You're so immersed in trying to learn all the instructions and what the instructions do that you think that there has to be instruction that's actually holding this light on. There has to be some way it's being held on. Well, in the end, the global variables and the local variables, that's where all the ones and zeros that actually control these lights are held. And the instructions just act upon them. So if nothing is acting upon the global variable that has the one in it that's making this green light come on, then it's gonna stay on forever. In fact, we could delete these two instructions. This light would stay on. Um, while we're here, I think we've already done this before, but let's go to our global variables and let's look at our outputs. And right now you have the logical value. And if I check outputs, which has no instruction on it, then the yellow light's gonna come on. And since there is no instruction acting upon the green light right now, I can uncheck this box and the green light will go out. But so just to understand a little bit about that, hold your red button and now try to make the green light come back on. While we see the checkbox come on for a split second in the Connected Components Workbench software, the green light never came on. And that's because right now our reset instruction over here in this program is writing a zero to that every single scan. But now once I've let off of it, I can manually check the box on, off, on, off. So this is another good example that shows that our set and reset instructions don't actually write to the outputs controlling these lights. They write to those global variables. So I hope that helped you understand the set and reset instruction. Again, be careful with these two instructions because they can be really easy to use on like really basic things such as this. But when you start really compounding them and having multiple situations that need to turn on and off outputs, such as typical machine steps, you can really bloat your program and make it hard to troubleshoot fast. Till next time. Hi, this is Till. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.